What do we do, or what are we not doing that we should be doing to really recruit and attract those students into the housing profession? And also, how do we keep those folks who are seasonal in the field who, you know, who are thinking about leaving? Um, mm -hmm. uh, because they're, over, they're stressed, they're overwhelmed, um, some don't, don't want to be on call. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that everybody needs to keep in mind, it's, it's a funnel effect. Mm -hmm. The most positions in housing are at entry level. Mm -hmm. So there are going to be fewer opportunities to be promoted, right. just as there are in other areas of student affairs. Um, I was one of those people, I was going to be a dean of students, I wasn't going to stay in housing. Mm -hmm. uh, somewhere along the line I realized that I um, could have much more autonomy as a director mm -hmm. of housing and budget. Um, <clears throat> there were some really good things about remaining in housing. And I think um, the National Training Housing Institute, NHTI, which has been in existence now for over 20 years, mm -hmm. um, has really helped to take uh, people with three to five years of experience, um, spend time helping them develop their own professional development plan, having faculty spend intense time with them during the institute, and then following up with them. Uh, the retention in the field, I believe, has been significantly impacted positively mm -hmm. by those who participated in those institutes. So I think the more we can create opportunities to help along the professional development and show young professionals what they stand to gain by remaining in housing um, could go a long way. And, It'd be nice if we could do more of those NHTI experiences mm -hmm. because it's limited to a pretty small group each year. But I, I think one of the things we as senior housing officers need to do is we, we need to be good role models. If people look at us and say, I don't want your job, then there's something wrong that mm -hmm. we're not role modeling. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite questions that I ask you know, the, the graduate students is, where do you see yourself in three to five years? And I'm really proud and, and happy to hear somebody say, I want your job in mm. five to ten years, which it's means good. they perceive that's to be a, a good thing to be ascending to, and we're all for that. When I think about the things that we ask our residence directors to do, okay. the, the breadth of um, knowledge that we expect them to have, the, the range of abilities and competencies that we expect them to have, um, there's nothing entry level about it, because okay. entry level suggests that you're a rookie, you don't know anything, therefore you're not going to be able to contribute much. Well, well that's to me, is, is a bunch of malarkey. Uh, my feeling is that uh, it may be an entry-level position in that it happens to be the way most people enter the profession. Right. It doesn't mean that that has to be the first of, what, X number steps. You know, if you have five different positions in, a, in your career, does that mean you've been successful? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I know, uh, I know residence directors who, who probably should go do something different in six months. I've known residence directors who are, are still very constructive in their work, that they bring a passion to it every day uh, and have been doing it and continue to learn mm -hmm. and serve as incredible mentors and, and role models uh, for some newer staff. Uh, who have been doing this work for 10, 12, 15 years as residence directors in what we have sometimes called entry level. So I think we, we have to get past some of, those, that, some of that labeling mm -hmm. and recognize that, that we have colleagues who bring some unique gifts to their work, whatever that work is, and uh, allow them to continue working until they're done. You know, they're no longer uh, able to, uh, to get up in the morning and can't, get, can't wait to get to work. That, that fire in their belly has somehow diminished. Uh, in terms of uh, how we keep them in the field, how we keep them energized, how that, that fire stays lit, engage them. I think part of the issue is how we're structured um, in the housing. We have many, many, many positions mm. at the baseline level mm. and then it, there's this sharp um, decline in the number of, and types of positions that are available. And so I think that's part of what younger professionals see. They want to move up mm -hmm. and that keeps narrowing, that the possibilities keep narrowing. So instead they go out mm -hmm. as opposed to up. 
Um, and I don't know that there's a lot we can do about that. Yeah. That's just kind of how it's structured. Um, I also think that um, housing, uh, I, I, um, a little aside here, I'm married to someone who started out in housing. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, he was a hall director for a couple of years. That's where we met. And mm -hmm. he um, got out of housing after being a hall director into career planning and placement because <laughs> he maintained that only masochists stayed in housing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, we joke about that, but um, <laughs> it, it can be very demanding um, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, kind of being on call all the time. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I guess it's in terms of encouraging people to stay in the field, it's a matter of helping them understand what the benefits are and what you get out of it as a career. Um. And most of them start off in housing because that's where 85% of the, the entry level jobs are. And many of them stay. I think we need to, as an association, continue to do a better job of uh, personnel development, mm. job force development here. Um, you know, if you take any of these standardized tests when you're, you know, cause I, the Career Center used to report to me at Sonoma. Um, student Affairs is not one of those options on the, on the <laughs> you know, you fill the bubbles, you don't get Student Affairs back mm -hmm. as one of the options, you know, you get everything else. And so, as long as we're not in the options, you know, we got a lot of, whole, a lot of good Student Affairs people. Uh, who can do all kinds of things. And you don't have to be a hall director, but you can, housing, can, you can be an accountant, you can be summer conferences, you can do all kinds of things. But we still have to get into that mix someplace. Because what I've experienced, like I said, I came the back way. A lot of people who are RAs or student leadership go to their careers and they come back and they go, mm -hmm. you know what? Wow, something's missing. So they come back to us. Yes. And so, um, but I think a lot of what we need to do is uh, continue to develop the workforce in a way, first of all, that helps people work with a diverse population. Mm. Um, and I've been proud of, of Stars College. We bring in a very diverse pool of candidates each year. Uh, but most of our universities and our university programs are very Eurocentric in our orientation. So we have a hard time particularly re retaining people of color in the profession mm. because we don't address, we want to look different, we just don't want to be different. Now, why is that so? Why do we have a difficult time obtaining and maintaining people of color within the field? Because we t our programs tend to be cultures of privilege, and we don't know, we won't look at that. It's mm. too scary to look at that. And so we bring folks in, and I can go on for hours. You ain't got enough tape for me to go on. But we, we bring folks in who are different. And then, first of all, in too many cases, uh, if we have a person of color in a, a majority white program, we oftentimes add, added unassigned ver um, burdens to that person. Mm -hmm. You're the hall director, but we also, the black students are having, or Latino students have expectations to you because you're the only one on campus who's young. So you got to advise the black fraternity, you got to be the multicultural person, your colleague over in another building, if they have a racial issue, they're going to call on you mm -hmm. to help figure this out, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. And then when you set the table and you bring, bring forth any new ideas or suggestions, they tend to get ignored because mm. it makes people uncomfortable because you're asking those people to challenge how, we as a system challenge how we're doing things or how we perceive things. Because first thing we're gonna say, well, we're not racist. And so, you know, or we're not homophobic or we're not sexist, rather than saying, wow, we got some work to do. Mm. As I said, all the time, <laughs> we got some work to do. So if you're a person of color or LGBT, Q person sitting there or a person with a disability and you can, you're brought in to see things differently but when you report back that you see things differently, you're not heard. Mm -hmm. Because the syst a system of privilege will always protect itself. Mm -hmm. Always. Until you're willing to acknowledge that we got some work we need to do. I think we need to reframe what we look at as a hall director. Mm -hmm. A hall director is not an entry level position. A hall director is a full-time professional position. I've always advocated that we should pay a hall director seventy or eighty thousand dollars if they're good at what they mm. do. Why should we force hall directors to stay three years to move to assistant director to make more money? If they're good at what they do, keep them in there. I could have stayed a hall director the rest of my life had I not gotten married. Mm. And because we do a disservice to the young people when we put the most inexperienced people in a place such as hall director where people need it the most. Mm. And so I think hall directors look at a professional position just as a medical doctor. One of the greatest hall directors I ever had 
he left at the age of 35 he left because he got tired of the pressure people asking him are you still a hall director are you still a hall director when you come out of medical school you're a doctor mm -hmm. do people still ask you are you a doctor mm -hmm. after 10 or 15 years the hall director is and should be a professional position we should treat it that way and we should pay them accordingly